All right, it's time to talk about Soulframe. Their first dev stream was just a few days ago, and don't worry, we will talk about that and more specifically the combat showcase in that dev stream in just a little bit. But first, let's dive into what Soulframe is and start from the beginning of this game's development. The Soulframe official reveal trailer released on July 16th, 2022, provided the first glimpse into Digital Extreme's new game. Following their success with Warframe, Soulframe is a free-to-play action MMORPG with fantasy elements. While drawing some comparisons to Warframe, Soulframe distinctly focuses on melee combat and magic. Set in a high fantasy world inspired by various mythologies and nature themes, Soulframe features a grounded, nature-centric aesthetic contrasting the sci-fi setting of Warframe. I'm more into fantasy than sci-fi, so seeing that this game is from the talented developers behind one of the most successful live service games to date, Warframe, I was instantly excited and eager to see what this team could do in a fantasy setting. The trailer showcased lush environments, mystical creatures, and intricate designs emphasizing the game's fantasy roots. Combat appears slower and more deliberate, focusing on close quarters combat and magical abilities. And this is where we can see the first red flag in Soulframe being developed by Digital Extremes who excel at fast, twitchy gameplay and do it very, very well, have now pulled a complete 180 and are creating this game to be much slower paced in terms of combat. Now, I love when developers take risks and challenge themselves to do things they have never done before, but you can definitely tell in the gameplay they have shown off so far, the combat just visually looks pretty rough. I'm not too upset by this though. I mean, they have only been developing this game for a little over two years, which is a minuscule amount of time when it comes to game development. They've shown not only with Warframe, but with these dev journals and preludes that we will touch on soon, that they listen to feedback and are very transparent when it comes to all that stuff. So yeah, combat needs some work, but these devs are incredibly talented. I've no doubt they'll fix it. Soulframe is expected to feature open world exploration, allowing players to immerse themselves in beautifully crafted environments. Character customization will likely be extensive, including various abilities and gear similar to Warframe. As an MMORPG, cooperative multiplayer elements will encourage players to team up for quests and adventures. Usually, open world is a turnoff for me, but that's mostly when talking about single player experiences. This being a sort of MMO light, being open world is definitely a pro and not a con in my opinion. The reveal generated significant excitement among Warframe fans and the broader gaming community, eager to see how digital extremes would expand their creative vision into a new genre and setting. Like I mentioned earlier, not a big sci-fi guy, so never really got into Warframe. However, I can certainly acknowledge and appreciate the success of that game and the developers behind it. So when I heard the Warframe team was going to do a fantasy game, my attention was certainly grabbed. I always love when dev teams do these kind of updates and set some time aside to update all of us on their game. It's definitely something lacking in the industry at the moment. It's very wholesome to see these updates and I think it ultimately helps them create a better game because of their commitment to their fans and staying in touch with them. Touching a bit more on that, the devs have been releasing these Soulframe journals, which provided us with insights into the game's concept art, sound design, and animation. They showcase pieces like Distant Shores and The Moose, emphasizing a more warm and welcoming vibe. Sound design is nature-centric, with organic sounds for creatures like Orangol the Wolf and the Sparrow, adding to the immersion. The animation team, with over a decade of experience from Warframe, aims for a slower pace and more grounded combat system. Motion matching is a new system they are using to ensure fluid animations, making encounters like the wolf jumping in and attacking the enemy visually impressive. I don't know enough about this motion matching technology to really speak on it. From what I can see in the game though, some things look incredible while others, mostly the combat, just look off. Is this a limitation of motion matching? I'm not too sure. In addition to the journals, Soulframe Preludes introduce various gameplay features. Soulframe Preludes, for those that don't know, is essentially an early build of the game that right now only a handful of people have access to. However, they mentioned that everyone will be able to access Soulframe Preludes later on this fall, which is great. This will definitely help speed things along on the development side of things, and again, just helps shape and build the community and relationship that community has to the Soulframe team. The game boasts impressive animal designs, NPC armor sets, enemy diversity, and crafting importance. Idols, which are essentially your ultimate, offer unique abilities, while encounters provide many quests around the region. They've also done a few Q&A sessions. The team discussed potential tools as weapons, like a shovel, for instance, central themes for packs, which are essentially your player class, 
mounts, and NPCs like Verminia the Witch, who offers elixirs and fashion options. They did release a gameplay reveal in August of 2023 that I won't go too much into detail here as a new gameplay demo was just released a few days ago that we will dive into here soon. But this one from 2023 showed us the camp on the Silver Sea, the virtue system, which are basically your primary attributes, courage, spirit, and grace. My guess is this is their take on the typical strength, dexterity, and intelligence main attributes we see in most RPG games. They showed off some character customization and the importance of awakening connections to ancestors. We saw combat, encounters, and procedural dungeons with puzzles with the focus on immersive exploration. Overall, this gameplay reveal showed off how talented this team is, the art direction, the style, the music, and audio is just outstanding. However, the combat just seems very off. I can't quite place my finger on it. It just seems too slow and boring. I know they want it to be much slower than the likes of Warframe, but in my opinion, it just seemed too slow. I know I'm sounding like a broken record at this point, but it's true. I absolutely love everything about this game so far, except for the combat at the moment. Okay, so this brings us to the first dev stream that was held just four days ago as of recording. They highlighted the game's optimistic tone, themes of redemption, and some more cozy animals like the rat. We learn more about the ancestors and how they play a crucial role in gameplay systems, such as Verminia and how we can customize our character and craft elixirs at her little station. This is also when they announced that Soulframe Preludes is set to release this fall for everyone on PC, and they did stress that consoles is most definitely on their mind for the future of this game. Overall, learning more about the team and the devs specifically was great. Super awesome. Wish more game studios would do this. Okay, it's gameplay demo time. Let's talk about the demo shown off on July 20th of 2024. The demo begins with a sneak peek of the Warsong Prologue quest, starting with a sparrow flying through Madrath, which looks very impressive in my opinion. The scene transitions to a room within a castle where we can customize a woman, presumably our mother. It's likely that we will also get to customize our father, which will influence our character customization. A very interesting concept here. We see our robotic-like arm as our mother sends us off while enemies approach the castle. So all of that was super cool and intriguing. The demo fast forwards to our character, the envoy, all grown up. We enter the Nightfold, a place we can access at any time, similar to the Orbiter and Warframe. Here, we can talk to ancestors, customize our character, manage skills, weapons, and armor, and delve into lore. As long as there are no aggroed enemies, we can enter the Nightfold at any time. This Nightfold realm is very, very nice. I think this will add to the quality of the game and allowing us to quickly make decisions to our characters so we can jump right back into the gameplay pretty quickly. Lots of games these days have a tendency to waste lots of our time, so it's good to see that the devs seem to care about our time as a player. The main gameplay involves traveling around the overworld to restore our ancestors and help develop our village in the Nightfold. For example, the blacksmith is one of the ancestors and the crafting interface involves fragments, assembly, and reforging. Fragments can be found around the world and brought to the blacksmith to reassemble weapons. There is also an arsenal where we can swap out gear, packs, idols, and more. A sparrow is used to guide us rather than a waypoint. This does enhance immersion, however, curious to see if it will get annoying when traveling far distances. I can see myself getting tired of always snapping my fingers to see where the sparrow wants me to go. Neat idea nonetheless though. The demo then showcases combat near an encampment, which is not particularly impressive. This is where we can see for the first time that everything looks off and rather floaty. We kill them all and interact with a rat, and similar to the sparrow, it helps us navigate the land. We then go on to fight this boss Nimrod, which you can just see this guy is not very well polished, animations are a bit sloppy, and the processing effects are way, way, way overtuned. I saw a lot of people getting upset by this and the camera shake and the motion blur, but remember, we will almost definitely be able to turn all of that stuff off when we get our hands on this game. After watching this fight with Nimrod back numerous times, we really only see three unique mechanics from him. One mechanic is Nimrod calling down lightning at our current location to hit us. The second mechanic, Nimrod did some slams with his staff that caused waves of lightning to come out and hit us, which can be dodged by jumping. We see a third and final mechanic from Nimrod. When we are close to him, he will slam his electric staff onto us multiple times. Overall take on this fight is that it just looked kind of meh. Now, maybe it felt great to play, but as a spectator, I wasn't that all impressed, especially when we know these are the guys behind Warframe. Like, these are extremely talented individuals. 
we do see at one point our character dies and we see the options to seek your fallen frame or rise here. Basically, we can either traverse the land as a sparrow to find our fallen frame and then snap back into reality or respawn at a checkpoint. After reviving, we follow the rat to find an ancestor, playing an instrument to unlock a hidden entrance. Inside, we meet Verminia, who we restore to add to the Nightfold. She rewards us with an elixir. We enter our final encounter with Nimrod, and we use the elixir to change the environment from dark and gloomy to sunny and warm. No new mechanics are shown off by Nimrod, and we eventually defeat him, earning XP in both our Pact and Weapon. Which again, think of the Pact as our class. Back in the Nightfold, Verminia is now our Master of Colors and Elixirs, used for dyeing gear and crafting potions. She hints at our next quest involving the corrupted bear, Bromius. Overall, again, the art direction, style, music, and audio are just outstanding. However, the combat needs significant improvement. The devs' transparency and openness to feedback are commendable, and I remain optimistic about Soulframe's potential. Despite some visual choices, the game looks gorgeous, and I'm excited to see how it evolves. You can tell by the dev stream that this team is incredibly passionate about this project, and I'm sure they will listen to the feedback on the combat. Anyways, that's going to do it for today's video on Soulframe. Be sure to subscribe for more updates and coverage on this exciting new game. Thanks again for watching, and remember, take excellent care of yourselves, and goodbye!